All right guys, so in this video, we're gonna go through the CGY 750's rudder basic menu. To access the menu, we need to press the plus data key right here until we get to rudder basic. And the next thing we're gonna do is press the plus mode key. And the first parameter this is gonna bring us to is our servo type. If you notice here, I actually have my rudder servo unplugged from the CGY 750. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have the correct pulse width set for your particular rudder servo type prior to plugging the rudder servo into the CGY 750 as there's room there to potentially damage the servo um, if you have the wrong type selected in here. Generally most tail servos are a 1520 pulse width, the exception being some of the Futaba high-end tail servos such as the BLS 256 HV or the BLS 276 SV servos right now. Uh, there's a few others out there as well but make sure that you determine your servo's appropriate pulse width type and have it selected in this menu prior to plugging it into the CGY 750. Uh, like I said, you have your 760 parameter available in here as well as analog. Uh, since I am using a aligned tail servo, I'm going to use the 1520 pulse width as that's correct for my servo. And we can move on to the next menu here. Before we move on to the next parameter here in the CGY 750, we should first verify that our rudder stick movements are matching what our tail rotor blades are actually doing. One easy way to do this with most models is to take the top tail rotor blade and fold it forward. And once we've done this, we'll go to our radio and feed left rudder in on the, the radio and watch the tail blade. From the back of the helicopter's perspective, we should see the tail blade move to the left. If you do not, you want to go into the reverse menu of the 14SG and reverse the rudder channel. And this will correct that behavior so that when you give left rudder, the tail blades move to the left. Uh, this trick seems to work on most models out there. Uh, you might want to double check it on your helicopter to uh, ensure that this is moving the tail blades or the tail blade pitch in the correct direction. But I found this to work on most models as a general guideline. Once we have this set, we can set up our GY direction here, or our gyro compensation direction. This parameter basically controls which direction the rudder axis gyro will compensate when it detects a uncommanded yaw movement. In other words, if I rotate the helicopter counterclockwise, I should see the tail rotor respond with a clockwise amount of yaw pitch or right rudder. So if we move the nose to the left, as I'm doing here, we should see the tail blades with the top tail blade folded down move to the right. If this is not happening, if when I give rotate the helicopter to the left, the tail blades are moving to the left, then we will need to reverse this parameter and that will correct the gyro compensation direction. And that's all there is to the setting next parameter, parameter that we have to adjust here are our servo limits. And these are important to get into the correct ballpark. So ideally we want our server limits somewhere between 90 and 110%. And this will require you to adjust the ball on your rudder servo, either in or out, in order to get the limits into this window. Uh, it's important to note also that this parameter is two-sided. So if we look in the lower left-hand corner, we can see the letter A. And if I move my rudder stick to the left, it changes to letter B. So this tells me that letter B is my left rudder limit and letter A is our right rudder limit. So we want to make sure that when we're setting this up that we adjust both sides of the parameter in order to ensure that we have full travel on our tail blade pitch. And again we want to try and achieve 90 to 110 percent. So this will require you on some models to play with your uh, servo horn uh, ball distance in order to get the limits into this window. Uh, it's important to note here too that although getting it roughly set up on the bench is important to make sure that you don't have any binding and your geometry is correct, we will go to the field and adjust the linkages with the gyro set in rate mode until the helicopter no longer drifts and after this we will have to come back and revisit the servo limit menu and we may have uh, either an uneven number or we may have to adjust them slightly outside of the 90 to 110% window depending on your helicopter's geometry. So in a future video we will go to the field and do that adjustment and we will see where the servo limits wind up on this model here. 
but for now I'm going to adjust them so that I have max travel with the limits somewhere between 90 and 110%. The last parameter in the rudder basic menu here is the flight mode and you have two choices either 3D or sport mode. Generally I find the 3D mode works for most people. The sport mode is slightly softer. Uh, some of the delays and gains in the expert menu I believe are a little bit softer when you run the sport mode but generally the 3D mode seems to work well for most pilots so I would recommend leaving it there. And that basically concludes our rudder basic menu setup.